بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Brothers and sisters and dear viewers السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Speaking about the great prophets and messengers of Islam which all prophets and messengers are from Islam and they all came with the religion of Islam calling to Islam and that's why they were all Muslims All prophets and messengers came with one religion and that's the religion of Islam Surrender to Allah. Submit to Allah. Beginning with Adam and the final and the last prophet and messenger was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad alayhi salatu wa sallam is the final prophet and messenger of all prophets and messengers. He is the last prophet and messenger to come to this world. Came 1,400 years ago, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad, may the peace and the blessings of Allah be upon him was that final brick as he describes himself of a building alayhi salatu was salam describes himself and the rest of the prophets and messengers as a building made out of bricks and there was one final brick on one of those corners of the building and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam says I am the final brick that completes that beautiful building which means all of them were the prophets of Allah all of them were the prophets and the messengers of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is like that brick, like the rest of the bricks of that building, nothing beyond, the, beyond being a prophet and a messenger of Allah. But the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam had special characteristics and traits that Allah made him to be the best and the greatest prophet and messenger of all prophets and messengers. Yes, we Muslims believe Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the greatest prophet and messenger and not only that the greatest prophet and messenger out of all prophets and messengers and the greatest human being ever stepped foot on the surface of this earth why because he is the final prophet and messenger that was sent to this world prophets and messengers before him prophets and messengers before him were sent to particular tribes particular nations particular cities but the prophet muhammad peace be upon him was sent to the entire mankind so he alayhi salatu was salam had the special duty and responsibility in which Allah had sent him as he says in the Quran Karim to the entire world to the entire people not only to the Arabs to the Arabs and the non-Arabs not only to the white people to the white and the non-white people not only to those who live in the Arabian Peninsula to every single human being standing on the surface of this earth to the day of judgment that's what makes the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam unique. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had taken a pledge and an oath from all the Prophets and the Messengers before Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam at any time that Muhammad will exist at their time that they follow Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam comes from an Arab descent. Yes, he was born in Mecca, in the Arabian Peninsula, in the heart of the Arab world. But that a natural thing that Allah Azza wa Jal made him to be from the progeny and the descent of Ismail alayhi salam. Just because him being an Arab, it does not confine Islam to the Arabs. Islam is to everyone. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam makes that very clear. Where Allah also says in the Quran al-Kareem, Ya ayyuhal nas, inna khalaqnaakum min dhakarin wa untha, wa ja'annaakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu, inna akramakum inda Allahi atqaakum. Allah sits the boundaries and Allah sets his principles very clear or people we had created you from male and female and we had made you different tribes so you could recognize one another then Allah Azza wa Jal makes it very clear Inna akramakum atqakum. the most honorable one to Allah is the one that fears Allah most whether he is an Arab or not black or white from the Middle East or from the East or from the West or from North or from South Whoever they are, the most honorable one, the most honorable one to Allah is the one that fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most. And that's why the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from his final words, he said, racism, discrimination is under his feet. It is rotten and it's under his feet. There's no racism in Islam. There's no discrimination in Islam. He says, alayhi salatu wa sallam, may the peace and the blessings be upon him that there's no difference between black, white, red, this tribe, over the tribe, only with piety. 
only with the fear of Allah. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent to everyone. And he was sent to save people from the corruption of evil thoughts and actions to the, to the monotheism of Islam and following the right path of Islam to bring upon them happiness in this world and success and happiness in the after. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is for everyone. Muhammad alayhi salatu wa sallam is for the Arabs. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is for the Westerners. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is for the Asians. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is for the Africans. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is for the Americans, for the Australians. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is for the rich and he is for the poor. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is for the strong and he is for the weak. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is for the leaders and for the followers. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is for everyone. And this is a very important message. And he alayhi salatu wa salam came to complete and perfect what his previous brothers from the prophets and messengers left behind. And that's why Islam is a perfect religion. Islam is a complete religion. It started with Adam alayhi salam and it continues to the day of judgment. And every prophet and messenger came with Islam, including Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. However, the legislation of Muhammad, which is the Quran that was revealed to him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the most perfect legislation and the most perfect book. And that's why we follow the, the most current legislation, the most current book, the most current way of life, the most current sacred book, and that's the Quran Kareem. We follow it. The Quran Kareem includes within it what's in the Bible, what's in, it, uh, what's in the Bible, the Injil, what's in the Torah, the Old Testament, and Suhaf Musa, and the Zabud, the palms of Dawood, and all the sacred books before the Quran Kareem. The Quran is an inclusive book of all the previous sacred books before. And the amazing miracle is that every book, every sacred book that was revealed to the prophets and the messengers before Muhammad has a no doubt been distorted, changed, except the Quran. It's been the same Quran from the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa to this day, 14 centuries, 1,435 years, and yet not even a minor change can enter or infiltrate into the Quran Kareem. It's the book that's been protected by Allah. Allah says in the Holy Quran, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidhun. We indeed reveal this book, this Quran, the remembrance of Allah, and we indeed will protect it. The Quran Kareem has been protected by Allah. However, Allah is the one that revealed the Bible, the Injil. Allah Azza wa is the one that revealed the Torah, the Old Testament. Allah Azza wa is the one that revealed the Zabur, the Palms, and the other books. But Allah did not protect them the way He promised that He'll protect the Quran Kareem. And for that, we follow the Quran Kareem. When we read the Quran, as if we are also reading the Bible that Allah revealed to Isa alayhi salam, Jesus. When we read the Quran, as if we are reading the Old Testament that was revealed to Musa alayhi salam. The only difference between the current Bible and Torah and the rest of the books that the Quran is authentic and fortunately the rest is not. There is a lot of distortions and changes had entered and that's why you go to any Islamic bookstore, you ask for a Quran, you'll get one copy of the Quran. You go to any Christian or Jewish or any other denomination of their book, you'll get uh, several copies of the same denomination or the same religion of different sacred books that they believe in. So it becomes a very complex situation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to uphold three main, in principle, three main principles as the scholars say. Perfecting the belief of people, aqeedah. Ibadah, worshipping Allah the way Allah wants to be worshipped. Akhlaq, manners and morals. Islam is founded on those three main principles. To have the correct belief in Allah, to worship Allah correctly and to have the best of manners and morals. Islam is a way of life. It's not about your connection between you and Allah. It's your connection between you and Allah, the Creator, and the connection between you and the rest of the creation. This is the beauty of Islam. Islam, Islam and the religion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and what the Prophet alayhi salatu sallam came with does not accept the concept of seclusion. We are here to live amongst the creation of Allah. We are here to connect our souls with the Creator and connect our souls with the rest of the creation of Allah. Connect our souls with the Creator and that's Allah, to believe in Allah in the way Allah wants us to believe in Him and to worship Him in the way that He wants us to worship Him. Not the way I feel like worshipping Allah. And for that, 
Allah ordains upon us five daily prayers that we must fulfill and complete and other worships that we must do throughout our lives. And Islam, the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ came to connect us with the rest of the creation, to connect me and myself, how to deal with myself, to do what's right with myself. And that's why Islam forbids me to drink because it's bad for me. Islam forbids me to take drugs because it affects me. Islam forbids me to do other haram and other, uh, other forbidden and evil actions because it brings harm to myself. Also, Islam connects me and my parents. It wants me to have a good relationship between me and my mother and my father. Islam wants me also to be connected to my brothers and my sisters, my siblings. Islam also wants me to be connected to my children, have a good relationship and bond between me and my kids, between me and my sons and my daughters and my grandchildren. Also, Islam connects me between me and my fellow brothers and sisters in Islam. Islam connects me between me and my neighbors, whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims. Also, Islam not only confines your connection between you and Muslims, but also, also Islam connects us between us and the non-Muslims, how to deal with them, how to respect them, how to interact with them. Not only that, but Islam connects me and with the animal. It teaches me how to respect that living thing, not to punish or not to be cruel and not to, be br not to brutalize any animal. It's forbidden in Islam to be harmful towards an animal. Not only that, but also Islam connects me with the environment. And Islam teaches us to look after the environment, to look after this beautiful nature that Allah had created. Not to waste water, not to waste food, not to cut trees for no reason. This is what Islam is about. It's about your connection with Allah the Creator and your connection with the rest of the creation of Allah, no matter who they are and what they are. And that's why Islam is a unique religion. And that's why the Quran is so comprehensive, encompasses everything. It's the perfection of all the previous books and all the sacred books that were revealed to the prophets and messengers before Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam was the last touch up and the final brick of that beautiful building that alayhi salatu wa sallam was laid in to give that beautiful picture and the, uh, and the, uh, the beautiful picture and image of Islam where the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa continued on the same path of his pre previous prophets and messengers. And for that, we Muslims follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa We believe in him as we believe in Isa, as we believe in Musa, as we believe in Ibrahim, as we believe in Nuh, as we believe in all the prophets and messengers before and after. We believe in all of them. However, we follow the final and last prophet and messenger that was sent to mankind. And logically and common sense, that's accepted. You follow the last leader and the last president that's been elected into government and into power. It's not right that you have a current president or king ruling the country and then you want to follow a previous government that was there before. It's logical that we follow the last prophet and messenger. And Isa alayhi salam, Jesus, before he was elevated to the heavens, he was instructed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to tell his people of the coming of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the arrival of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We Muslims favor Muhammad over all the prophets and the messengers, even though we believe in all the prophets and the messengers. But Allah had chosen Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be the highest and the most regarded prophet and messenger out of them all. And at the same time, we we'll love them all. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, continued to teach us and embed in our hearts the continuous love of all prophets and messengers. In the Quran Kareem, Allah continues to mention the prophets and the messengers in the Quran Kareem. Allah continues to mention them. So the, their love increases in our hearts. Their respect increases in our lives. Their honor continues to strengthen and become big in our life. But at the end of the day, we need to accept the fact that the last prophet and messenger is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and no prophet, no messenger shall come after Muhammad, peace be upon him. Even though some might claim the prophecy and the messagehood after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we reject any call of anyone claiming the prophecy or the messagehood after the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is no prophet, there is no messenger after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is the final prophet and messenger that Allah sent to, to mankind and Allah Azza wa Jal describes Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as Khatim al-Anbiya, the seal of all prophets and messengers. The seal 
of all prophets and messengers. Muhammad, peace be upon him, a great prophet and messenger, one of his greatest of saying, where he says, I was sent by Allah to perfect the noble manners. Islam is about good morals. Islam is about good manners. Islam is about good discipline. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a great man when it came to manners. He was a great man when it came to morals. He was an open man in dealing with everyone and accepting everyone. Never rejected a person, no matter who they are. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may the peace and the blessings be upon him. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was a great example in dealing with others, interacting with others, having an open heart towards everyone. And this is the character of a Muslim. The character of a Muslim is that he's always open to everyone, works with everyone, has an open heart towards everyone, well-mannered and well-disciplined towards everyone. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a brother of Prophet Isa, Jesus, a brother of Prophet Musa, Moses, a brother of Prophet Ibrahim, Abraham, a brother of Prophet Nuh, Noah, a brother of all the prophets and messengers, they are all the prophets and the messengers of Allah. They are all the servants and the slaves of Allah. They are all human beings. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continued to make it clear, never ever ever exaggerate in me and never ever put me on a higher level than being the servant and the slave of Allah. I am the prophet and the messenger of Allah and a human being who is the servant and the slave of Allah, a proud servant and slave of Allah, never gone beyond that. And we all believe in all the prophets and the messengers. They are all prophets and messengers of Allah, servants and slaves of Allah, human beings like the rest of the human beings. But Allah had embedded in their lives the perfections of the perfection of righteousness and piety. To us, they are the greatest of examples and role models. We take them all in high regards. We look up to them. We love them. We follow them. And we want to be with them in the paradise. I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to accept from us. And I ask Allah to make us from amongst those who listen and hear, act upon what they listen and hear. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.